So you want to add an external antenna to the Raspberry Pi 4. In this video, I'll cover how to do the modification, and then at the end I'll show detailed comparisons in the performance before and after the modification. The primary purpose of adding an external Wi-Fi antenna is to allow you to place the antenna outside of a metal enclosure, or to allow more control over the antenna choice and positioning. See the previous videos for more background. But right now, let's get to it. Start by preheating the board to 100 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes prior to soldering. You can do the prep work while it heats up. We will need to remove some of the solder mask on the ground plane where the U.FL connector shield connections are. To do this, you can use an X-Acto knife to carefully scratch away the mask. Use light pressure and be careful as it's more than capable of cutting clear through the metal. Once you have the area clean, add some flux to the whole area and prepare it to help with soldering. Once the board is up to temperature, dab some solder paste onto the pads and exposed areas. I'm using a hot air rework station set at 280 degrees Celsius with medium air speed and a medium nozzle, but you may have to adjust these settings to match your tools. Using hot air, gently heat the area until the solder consolidates onto the connections. Add more flux if needed to get it to flow nicely. While the area is still nice and hot, remove the capacitor connecting the old feed line to the PCB antenna. This will mostly disconnect the old PCB antenna and ensure the majority of power will go to the external antenna instead. Now to add the jumper. I'm using an 0201 zero ohm resistor for the jumper here. In theory, you can use just any small bit of wire, but using wire that's too big could degrade the connection or could cause reflections so your results may vary. Add more flux if needed, then gently heat the area until the solder melts. Using tweezers, bump the resistor until the surface tension holds it in place. If you want to check that it worked, use a multimeter to test for continuity between the U.FL center connection pad and the old antenna capacitors pad. They should be connected. Now to add the connector. Check the orientation and place it down so the center connector will connect to the feed line and the two shield connectors will connect to the ground plane. Gently heat the whole area until the solder melts and the connector is pulled into place by the surface tension. If the connector has a little bit of surface oxidation that is keeping the solder from nicely flowing, add a bit more flux. Since the pads on the sides were just scraped off and are not perfectly shaped, the connector may end up slightly crooked. In this case it was pretty good, but if it's not perfect, it should still work as long as everything is connected correctly. Now that the modification is done, clean off the excess flux using some isopropyl alcohol. To test that it is soldered correctly, check for continuity between the center connector and the other side of the jumper. Also confirm that there isn't continuity between the center connector and ground. Finally, check for continuity between the connector shield ring and ground. If that all checks out, then you're done. Connect up the antenna of your choice and you're ready to go. If your antenna has exposed pads like mine here does, and you want to check the connection, you can check for continuity between ground and this shield pad, and between the feed line and this center pad. That's it for the modifications, but before I get to final testing results, here are the changes I made for two other variants that I tested. The first variant involves removing all the capacitors on the PCB antenna. The reasoning behind this is that there may still be some weak coupling where the previous capacitor was, and perhaps removing the other capacitors would decouple the resonant cavity antenna further so its resonance doesn't interfere as much. The second modification is a destructive one, and once you do it, you won't be able to use the PCB antenna anymore. For this modification, you cut the trace going to the old antenna using an X-Acto knife as close to the jumper resistor as you can. The theory behind this change is that the stub of wire left behind could have reflections which could destructively interfere with the external antenna signal. By cutting it and removing a chunk, this helps ensure that only the external antenna is connected to the Wi-Fi chip. This change was a bit messy due to the fiberglass dust, but I managed to cut out about a millimeter chunk and then I confirmed it was disconnected by checking the lack of continuity between the feed line and the old capacitor pad. So now that the modifications are done, I set up a test to check how well the signal level is under different conditions. To keep things consistent, I set sticky notes at five locations around my house where I could measure the performance. I wrote a script to take signal level measurements once per second for a minute and then report the statistics. I also set up a sixth location that shows the real strength of an external antenna inside the microwave. Since microwaves are designed to block 2.45 GHz radiation, it's a good example of situations that I've had where the Pi will be operating inside of a metal enclosure. Using the built antenna in these cases is impossible, but with an external antenna, we can place the antenna on the outside of the enclosure. The variants that I tested were as follows. Stock PCB antenna, external antenna with only one capacitor removed, external antenna with all capacitors removed, and external antenna with the old line cut. So what did we find? First, for already strong signals like at location A, there was very little difference between the variants. However, in weaker signal areas, 
the external antenna was generally on par or slightly better than stock. Note that the external antenna I used is mildly directional, so that can mean at greater distances that the positioning is more sensitive. More interesting are the differences between the external antenna variants. In general, the variant with all the caps removed did end up performing better across the board than the variant with only a single capacitor removed. In addition, the variant with the cut trace generally blew the competition out of the water, suggesting that reflections from the stub or interference from the resonance cavity does have a negative effect on performance. Finally, as expected, I was unable to get any signal at all inside the microwave with the stock antenna, but I was able to pretty easily get a signal using the external antenna and running it outside. So in summary, the best solution if you want the change to be reversible is to remove all the capacitors, and the best overall solution is cutting the old line to prevent interference. And of course, when the pie must be inside a metal enclosure, adding an external antenna may be your only option, since it allows you to place the antenna on the outside, wherever it's convenient. That's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed and found it informative. I definitely learned some stuff through this experiment. Thanks for watching. Like if you liked, and subscribe to support more videos like this one.